There are bowls everywhere. This could be like a version of hell in a way. This is like uh, nothing I've ever seen. You kind of got to make a move right now or else we're... It's almost like a spiteful elk encounter. It's like, oh, you want you want to see some pit bull elk, do you? Here's more than anybody can possibly deal with. There's just eyeballs everywhere. Getting to the point of the day with the bad decisions that happen. The Zumwalt Prairie Preserve is a 37,000 acre swath of land owned and managed by the Nature Conservancy, a nonprofit conservation organization that does one heck of a lot of good work but doesn't immediately come to mind when we think about hunting. I have the invite to use one of their landowner tags and get a better understanding of their land management practices. Chad Dotson is one of two land stewards for the Zumwalt Preserve. His job entails managing the grass resource as well as hunting and other conservation-based programs. At any one time, there are numerous projects going on here, from rotational grazing to documenting how mammals use water resources. Chad's job is as multidimensional as this landscape. His knowledge of this place is going to be invaluable on this hunt. The Zumwalt is, is really interesting just in the fact that it's, it's one of the largest intact bunch grass prairies left in the lower 48. Chad was pointing out like a really prime example of really bunch grass, a native species fighting the good fight against a bunch of non-native species. And a healthy bunch grass ecosystem like this one provides excellent forage for herd animals. Only the problem is, without any reason to move, the elk herds here will overgraze their habitat. And since they're so well fed, procreate in numbers well beyond their carrying capacity, posing problems for other native mammals, such as the mule deer. And this gets to why I'm here. With such large numbers of elk, the Nature Conservancy utilizes hunting as a tool to both manage the numbers within this herd and move them around. So in terms of grazing management, it helps us move these big populations of elk around the prairie, keeps them from just hammering on certain forbs, certain grasses. But then there's that social cultural aspect where, where folks have been utilizing this, this ground to hunt, um, to fish, to gather for a long, long time, a long time. Zumwalt is surrounded by ranch land and cattle grazing as part of its management plan. The grass here has been grazed for nearly 250 years, beginning with the Nez Perce horse herds in the 1730s. And at this point, domestic grazing is part of the ecology. The true way to have a preserve, in my mind, is to have that people aspect. You know, to have an area that is denuded of people and call that natural just isn't that natural even though a lot of us kind of get in this mindset of like, oh, what would it be like before people? Sure. Well, nobody knows, because that just didn't exist. Like out here, if you don't have somebody running livestock, cattle, horses of some sort, it's just not natural. Right. It's hard to overstate how unique this hunting scenario is. After all, it's beautifully managed, private land, larger than some national parks, the Zumwalt does have a public access program, but right now, I am the only hunter with a bull tag. I've essentially got the place to myself. This morning, we got held up by a few hundred head elk out on the flats and then finally got back in here. The 
scary being. We're trying to deal with fewer elk. And there's, there, were, there were so many bulls in here, it's hard to ignore anyway. The elk that we've been seeing, the bulls that we've been seeing, man, they look incredibly healthy. These elk are fat. I really want to put one in the freezer. However, the open terrain and how bunched up the elk are won't make this a gimme. That was a bull, just bugled. The direction we're heading, also the direction that we're heading is like giant, massive Hell's Canyon, basically. So um, that's not really surprising to me. <laughs> I think no matter what happens, all, all roads are probably gonna lead into a big nasty hole. Pretty good looking bull down there. I feel like we definitely saw him last night. Oh, there he is, there he is. He's moving fast. As hard as it is to leave a bull screaming, I just don't have time on my side in this situation. I'll have to try again in the morning. This doesn't guarantee another close encounter, but it eliminates the possibility of losing a blood trail in the dark. So instead of gutting this thing out till dark, dark, slide out of here right now and hopefully not uh, booger this place up too much. There was an old rancher saying that good grass makes fat cattle. If the grass does well, cattle do well. While true, that's not the whole picture. There's a lot of life coming out of the prairie today. Pollinators, insects, amphibians, and songbirds benefit from healthy grass as well. Here on the zoom wall, yep. management choices are made by keeping all of this in mind while not focusing on an individual species. Apparently uh, being tall out on the prairie today makes you a magnet for uh, the smaller critters, like swarming flying ants. It could be a lot worse, definitely annoying. At least they're not biting. They have a bite my eye. Yeah, this sounds gross, but uh, do you want to lick this or do you want me to lick this? <laughs> I think it's a little early in the relationship for me to lick your fingers, so you go for it. All right, you ready? Just like that. Still there. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, we don't need to tell anybody about that. You're fine. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, moving on. Yep, right. Yep. This is a pretty neat scene that a lot of folks don't associate with the prairie. A bear has come in here and dug this whole area up, probably the size of like a pickup truck. I'd love to know what the bear was looking for, but it could have been camas roots or biscuit root or possibly even uh, moth larva. Again, it's not something you'd associate with a bunch of grass prairie, but it's pretty darn neat to see he's got a lot of digging done and really hard rocky ground and it's exactly what those bears are made to do. Yeah man, no matter what happens, this place is absolutely amazing. People have got to come check this thing out. Yeah. It's unreal. It's real diverse. The prairie up on top is really neat and then you break off in the canyons and it's just something else. Hard hiking in the heat of the day over dry, rocky terrain results in elk encounters, but no elk shots. As the sun drops, elk begin to appear from everywhere. This time, using Tina, the world's smallest elk decoy, we find ourselves surrounded, again, by bulls. While we're playing with this bull, there's two bulls fighting down here and four bulls feeding. There's two more bulls walking up the drainage over here. There's another bull to the right of this bull. 
There's two bulls walking across the hillside over there. It's literally too much to deal with. It's definitely seen the decoy. And uh, it definitely looks like he is really looking around to make sure that this situation is as good as he thinks it could be. He's definitely coming. <laughs> you see him? <coughs> when life gives you big bulls that don't cooperate, go find small bulls who do. Take away, I guess. Make the lady noises, not the man noises. Work tonight. Think we can get out of here without blowing this place up? I think so. Alright. Well, let's see what tomorrow brings. Very cool. That's bizarre. I mean, I would have been absolutely ecstatic if I didn't have a bow. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. It's just wild, man. Just wild. I started to feel like it would take about a month to be in here in order to find the right spot to cut them off. So, ideally, I'm gonna get down, slide in just above where these bowls were hanging out and just, just sit. Really, really close to the first bowl. That first bowl is right on the other side here. You can see each other. He was only 30 yards. I could have knocked an arrow and charged him. But that doesn't make for effective shooting in my, uh, in my case anyway. So that's the way it goes. Because there are so many bowls stacked in these canyons that if you make a mistake, it clears the canyon out. So it bumped basically one bull. He took five out of here, and then another five came out of this drill. It is really discouraging when you screw up as badly as I have today. Just, just normal terms. Just like regular old public land elk, highly discouraging. But it's like a kind of an interesting and special type of discouraging when you're on a place like the Zumwalt Prairie Preserve that has bulls like this running everywhere. They shouldn't be running, they're running because of me. Jeez. There are moments in any long hunt when you begin to have doubts. When you've screwed up a couple of times, then a few more, and all of a sudden, the terminus of the trip begins to make itself known. It's not like you want to fail, but that possibility starts to sneak into your subconscious. You start to brace yourself. It's a third wheel. A friend, one who you like, but who just so happens to sit between you and your date. A little distracting, a little irritating, but not the end of the world. I'll just say it, walking tired, 
not paying attention. A spike in a bull, Chad spotted, had already spotted us. I said that spike's looking at us. They lost interest soon enough, but now a nice tall racked bull is coming up and we're a little bit late, but the wind's good. I don't know if we can get from here into the head of this whale without them seeing us. Cut off by open terrain, all Chad and I can do is put the wind in our face, call, and hope for the best. He's in his bed right there. Can you see him? Yeah. He's 150 yards down there. ways to end this is really incredible. I can see that bowl now, by the way. It's just getting really dark. And uh, last second, late night shots are, are no fun. So if I were you, I would strongly suggest applying for one of these Nature Conservancy tags like a million acres across the U.S., lots of different opportunities. And this is like active hunting management, and you get to be a part of it. It's, it's really cool, and the opportunity is amazing. Now, we all know caution is the better part of valor, but sometimes a bull just gets too close. This isn't what I want to see. It's not a lot of penetration and clean fletching, so obviously I was hoping for more than that. But there is this skid mark here. Basically goes off a cliff edge. Look at that. That's just unbelievable. My motto is the evidence never gets better. If I gotta earn this bowl, like the Johnny Cash song, one piece at a time. That is fine by me. Even though I think the evidence strongly suggests that he just kept tumbling and fell through the chute down here, breaking himself to pieces. I, I'm not gonna take that for granted. I don't know why, I'm starting to get a little sick about this. I just can't imagine breaking bone off here. It's just cliff right there, and he fell. Slid right in. I'm trying not to be an idiot. Idiot like shooting a bull at the very last light on the very last day. That type of idiot. I hope he's piled up at the bottom of this thing. Oh, buddy. Looks like you got whacked with a shotgun. Just brutal. The 
The bull elk that's now cooling in my freezer is a byproduct of the hardy and tough bunch grass, as are the mule deer, as are the cattle, and as were the Nez Perce ponies that grazed here before them. This is a complicated and changing landscape. The binary terms we use, public or private, profit or preservation, do not fit here. Zumwalt Prairie Preserve is anything but binary, a place where cattle, wildlife, and hunting, private land, and public access all exist, not at the expense of one or the other, but to the benefit 